Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm just gonna do a little face of makeup that's kind of suiting the current mood or vibe I'm in as far as my makeup style. And I'm gonna walk you through some feelings I have towards YouTube, being a makeup consumer, being a content creator, and just everything to go along with like retail beauty. <laughs> so if that sounds of interest to you, let's jump right into the video. I'm gonna start by priming my skin. The first thing I'm gonna use is the Jaclyn Cosmetic Hydrating Under Eye Primer. I have been loving this. It has this really nice cooling metal applicator, but I just take it between my ring fingers, almost like an eye cream, and I like to pat it on. While I let that sit, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply my eye primer because I'm gonna do eyes first today. The Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Eye Primer. I still do not know my feelings on this primer. I've had it for a while and I've used a surprising amount of it. It's nice, it's not my favorite. Don't know if it really does much for the wear or longevity or the application of shadows, but I keep using it because I'm trying to figure it out and I'm over halfway through with this bottle, so. It still does not compare to my favorite, which is the Hourglass Veil Eye Primer. This one is really nice. I feel like I use such a tiny bit of this and it gives a little bit of color correction to the eyes. Application smoother and it increases the wear for a few hours of most shadows with this one. But this Milk Makeup one, no idea. I would also use the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Face Primer. And this is another product. I think I got this, the eye primer, and the setting spray all at the same time. They're all nice. They're very simple products. For the face primer, I find that the texture is nice. I'm almost having to like think about it as I apply it because it's not one I use very often. Definitely has like a grippy, tacky base to it. Considering I've had all of them at the same time and I'm over halfway through with the eye primer, this looks like it's pretty much full. And the mini version of the setting spray I'm almost finished with. The face primer was definitely the one I kind of feel the most that was most passable. Like, I can get rid of it. And then to prep lips, I'm gonna use the Dior Lip Glow Oil in shade 001 Pink. For eyes today, I have no idea what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna kind of apply everything and just kind of talk to you, my friends. The Etude Tiger Energy, which is a collection with musical tiger, and this is Zero Two Sleepy Tiger, so this like little cute palette. But first, I'm gonna start off with my It Cosmetics. This is the Superhero No Tug Gel Liner in Cosmic Copper. So if everything goes to my planning, there would have been a video that went up last weekend, and that was my unpacking with me video. That video was originally supposed to go up a few weeks ago, because since I recorded that video, I have gone back down to Virginia for three weeks, and then I've been home for a few days. Or I recorded that video right before I left with the intention to get everything edited while I was away. And back home, like I'm helping out my family, I'm doing different stuff with my family, and I find it really, really hard to focus and sit down and edit. Here at home in Toronto, I've got my little office downstairs that I just, I can be by myself, I can edit, it's quiet. And I don't have that at my parents. I find editing to be so challenging. So while I'm home this time for two weeks, I'm doing a lot of filming. Fingers crossed we will get our editing done. If not, they will go up later. But you all have been great with like just being patient. So I'm gonna go into this kind of shimmer mauve shade on the second row. So while I've been away, I really haven't watched any beauty videos or consumed much beauty content. I think the only beauty purchases I made while I was away was I bought a nail polish, which is the one that I'm wearing now. This is an older color from Essie. This is called After School Boy Blazer. And it's a color I've wanted for years and I used to have it. I don't know what happened to it, but I repurchased this off Amazon and I love this color. It's a really dark, really beautiful navy shade. And then on the way home, my husband and I, we stopped at Ulta in Buffalo, New York and I picked up a few items at Ulta. I did end up swatching a few things that I had for a while on my wish list, and oh my goodness. I feel like unless I've swatched something and liked it in store, I need to cut myself off from online shopping. Because online shopping, I buy things I think will be great, and then they get them home, and I'm like, ooh, 
no. So then I don't return things. I don't like returning things. So I just end up giving it to someone. To avoid spending money unnecessarily, I feel like now if I just start doing all of my shopping online, things will be a lot smoother and I will have to declutter less. So with my beauty content watching, it's been a little interesting. So recently my younger brother put a treadmill in the little gym area we have at my parents' house. And I have been using the treadmill a lot as like just a way to one, stay active and keep my body moving. And also it's like a nice quiet place because where the gym is, there's like no one there. It's over at my dad's shop. So while him and my brother are working during the day, I'm there by myself and it's just my place to like walk on the treadmill, watch a few YouTube videos, do my weight exercises, and just really just decompress, relax, take that time for myself. So while I'm on the treadmill and watching YouTube, I found it very difficult to watch some YouTube videos that I normally watch. And I just felt like I was no longer really interested in beauty content like I used to be. I found like my feelings and opinions on things were changing a lot. And it's very odd because I've been a YouTube consumer for years. I mean, I started watching YouTube beauty tutorials back when I worked at, I think it was Mac. So that would have been 2010. And since then, YouTube has been a huge inspiration and something I just really enjoyed watching. But now I'm finding it that it doesn't bring me as much joy watching some videos. Like I still watch a lot of videos, but I'm not watching as many beauty videos. And something that I used to love is one of those things now that I don't love. So I used to love watching whenever a new collection came out, whether it was like a drugstore lipstick or something I was into or luxury. Luxury was always more of a big one for me because that way I could see all of the colors and then kind of have a better guide on which one to purchase. Now when I'm watching them, a lot of channels, they had this common ongoing theme about reviewing new releases. And new releases are great they're fun they're wonderful they bring out this like feeling of excitement but I was thinking to myself and a lot of the new collections haven't really felt appealing to me I do have two items from newer collections that I will talk about today but those are the first two in a long time I found something from a new luxury collection that I really felt like a need and one of them I waited till I went in store overall my feelings as a consumer of YouTube beauty videos has been changing a lot and I find the mindset behind things is very different. I now kind of see these people who buy every shade in a collection, review it, and then especially some of them who are smaller channels. I'm a smaller channel and when you're a smaller channel you're not getting PR, you're buying everything. And unless people are like buying and returning, which I don't think a lot of them do, they're just buying products and then you'll see a declutter video there's a few months later. And it's like, yeah, I don't wear this shade, I'm a declutter. And then it's like, you're buying all of this stuff, you're promoting this image of overconsumption and buying things just for the sake of buying stuff for a review, which I mean, it's helpful it's helpful to people but I just I don't know my feelings have become quite different on buying things than it was before I'm gonna use this kind of ready brown bottom middle shade so with my feelings on purchasing beauty and the way I consume beauty I found that I enjoy getting back to some of the basics, so I have really enjoyed watching some more videos about fundamental skincare, watching more videos on seasonal color analysis, and <laughs> watching videos that review different movies and TV shows that I've watched recently, and I really enjoy that. Now I'm gonna go into the brown shade on the bottom, and I'm just gonna use my e.l.f. angled brow brush. Something else that has really gotten me in kind of like my makeup feelings has been these different accounts who like somehow have these like magical early launches that are not available to the rest of the world. And the one that sticks out to me in my mind more than anything is the new 
newer Chanel tweed eyeshadow collection. There was like one, I can't remember the name, it was like the more cool toned pinky mauve looking one. And I wanted it and I saw some different videos popping up on my feed of people reviewing this. And then I was talking to one of my friends on Instagram and she's like, how are people getting these? I can't get them, my essay said they're not available. So I'm like, hmm. Let me call my essay. So from Virginia, I called my essay here at the Chanel Boutique in Toronto. The essay was just like, sorry, these have not come out yet. They will be out September 1st. And I'm like, but how are other people getting? They're like, nope, it's a worldwide September 1st release. They're not available. And I'm like, okay, well, how do these people get this stuff? So anyway, it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth and the magic of this Chanel tweed collection kind of dissipated. So I didn't buy anything. And then at first I was like, am I gonna regret this? I haven't regretted it. And I really, other than like friends asking if I bought anything, I haven't thought about it much. That kind of made me think about is seeing these new releases is seeing stuff like this is that what makes me want to buy things I went onto my Instagram account and then I decided to unfollow some of the like sneak preview accounts. Since doing that, that's been goodness two weeks ago since I did that and my desire to buy new stuff has really gone way down and I'm like oh huh, interesting. Now I'm gonna go with that kind of bone shade right in the top corner and I'm just using this to soften out any edges. Before the whole thing with like the changes in my feelings towards beauty YouTube videos started happening, the thing that I felt like kind of set everything off was actually <laughs> shopping. So I was shopping for a pair of shoes for a wedding and my husband and I, we were shopping. I went to all of like the regular boutiques that I go to for shopping. And then in my mind, as far as men's dress shoes, as far as something that's gonna fit my feet well and be comfortable, I've always gone between Ferragamo and Gucci. And then I was in the store I needed because the suit I'm wearing is like a mauve color. It's a little bit more grayed out and muted than my t-shirt. So I wanted a pair of kind of ox blood or Bordeaux shoes to go with it. Nothing fit quite right. Nothing felt comfortable. Nothing had the kind of width I needed because my feet are wide. <laughs> so nothing was fitting my feet the way I needed them to. So I'm like, okay, well, this isn't working. So I ended up finding a pair of dress shoes for under a hundred dollars that kind of fit my needs. I'm like, huh, maybe I need to reconsider my luxury spending because there's great things at affordable price points. Then I was looking for a bag to go with the suit, something to put my phone in, my wallet, my keys, any of my touch-up products. Right before I went down to Virginia for the first time, after, right after all this stuff started happening, I was already planning my suit for the wedding. I had just ordered my suit and I was looking for the shoes and a bag to go with it. So we were shopping and I found the most perfect bag. I wanted something smaller, so I don't do clutches or handheld things. I wanted something small with a strap so I can throw it over my shoulder and forget about it. So we were actually shopping out at the little premium outlet mall here in Toronto and I was at YSL and I found the most perfect dark burgundy mauve shade. It was almost the same color as the MAC lip pencil in the shade half red. It was really beautiful and I was looking and I was like, oh, it's an outlet. It will be a great price. And the bag was still, I believe, oh goodness, I think it was like 2,500. So still over $2,000 and I'm like, I'm not gonna pay this much for a bag that I'm literally using for one occasion. So unfortunately, I've still not found a bag. I have a few weeks before the wedding. I've got time to find a bag. I love a good bag and I like bags in different sizes, different colors, moods to fit different outfits, different vibes. When I was back home, I was walking through Target and I've found at Target three new bags. I found a gray one, a green one and a blue one. They are all perfect and they were all under $30. Just amazing. If you want to see like a bag video or something like that, I can do a blog post or an Instagram video because I've done one bag video and I just don't feel like it's really my strong suit because the contents in my bag never change because I use bag organizers and I just literally take the bag organizer out and put it in the new bag. So that way I can change up bags when I want to. I don't know if I mentioned or not, I'm using 
using the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Plus Nude Glow in shade Fair Beige. Now that I've gotten a little bit of color, the shade is looking really lovely. I am gonna finally try out the Revlon Colorstay Skin Awakening Concealer in 002 Universal Brightener. I have still not tried this out. I was supposed to try it out and I just never did. So we are gonna try it out together today. So there is definitely a little bit of a peachiness. This is looking very, very close to my skin tone. If you're darker than I am or your skin tone doesn't have as much of like a kinky peachy tone as mine, this might actually work well as a brightening shade for me. It's looking like a really nice concealer shade. Definitely brightening under the eyes. It's looking nice. Under my eyes, it's peeling or rolling a little bit. From what I've heard, I don't feel like that would be this concealer. I am <laughs> steadily trying to finish up that necessaire sunscreen. I am just not a big fan of it. And then sometimes under makeup, it does not look the best. I'm gonna use a damp beauty sponge just to pat over. Earlier today, I did a little bit of an experiment with that necessaire mineral sunscreen. So I applied my normal two layers, let it dry down. I found the white cast does dissipate about 30 minutes after you've applied it and blended it. If it's something that you're going to apply to work, you're not a big makeup person or you have a darker skin tone, that might take a little too long for that white cast to dissipate. I'm going to keep layering on a tinted sunscreen on top just to add a little bit of color. Okay, I feel like now I want to add something just a little bit darker under the eyes so they don't look quite as bright and they kind of mirror the mood of the upper eye. So I'm gonna use the Dior Forever Skin Correct in shade one in. This is a little dark for me. Oh, that's still too dark for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> the shade is not my, ooh. Okay, yeah, that's too dark, too peachy. So it's definitely darker, but it's not giving that same element of color that I wanted under the eyes. It's okay. I can, I'm just gonna leave my lower lash line clear because my lower lash line already has a little bit more of like a ready tone to it. So I'm just not gonna conceal there and that will help things kind of blend more like I wanted them to. This is a really lovely concealer though. It's nice, but it's not a shade. It's not a formula that I loved so much. I felt like I needed to run out and get the correct shade. I'm actually in the middle of doing a declutter. I decided not to film this declutter series, but I'm going to declutter this the Dior concealer and give it to a friend who's got a darker, warmer skin tone than I do. The Jaclyn Cosmetics Powder Quad. And I just mixed together a little bit of the lilac, the bone, and the kind of peachy shade. I just mix a bit of all those together and just set right under the eyes. To set all over my face, I'm gonna use my Ramon Better Than Finish Pressed Powder. I have been absolutely loving this powder. For a K-Beauty product, I find it's a little on the pricey side. I believe I paid around $19 for this, but it is really beautiful. It's very smoothing. The highlight I'm using today is a relatively new to the market luxury highlight. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk highlighter in the shade Romance Light. Online, I thought it looked really beautiful, really nice, really cool toned. And I find it pulls a little warm. It's like a rose gold peachy shade. This shade down here made me feel like it was gonna be super, super cool toned. But as a whole, it, like most everything Charlotte Tilbury, this is a relatively warmer, neutral shade, leaning cool. It's like a, we'll call it a neutral with a touch of cool, cool tone. And that also kind of brings me to this other feeling of just like brands I no longer really feel interested in. Charlotte Tilbury has some products that I really, really enjoy. A lot of her products skew slightly warmer than I like. A lot of her foundations haven't been like a really great fit for me. I like this highlight, but it's it's not mind blowing. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna use it. It's not something I would declutter right now, but it's just, it's not doing a lot for me. New product I did pick up a few days ago when I was visiting Sephora with a friend is one of the Gucci blushes. This is in shade 05 Rosy Beige. I believe these are called the Luminous Matte Blushes, if I'm not mistaken. When I saw these being teased online, I was like, that's an easy skip for me. I don't need it. When I saw the shade in store and swatched, it was the only shade that really appealed to me. And this is the second to deepest shade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a fluffy brush. This is the BK Beauty bronzer brush. I'm gonna use it further back, almost like a rosy bronzer. It's gonna give you that nice warmth without looking like too much. Hmm, it's really pretty. It's quite smoothing on the skin texture. 
really beautiful shade. Let me try it right up here in the temple. This in a way is reminding me of that Chanel blush I really love, Rose Bronze. Very similar to that really beautiful kind of rosy brown shade. For me, this is a really lovely bronzer tone with a bit of rosiness because this kind of mimics that shade that I turn when I get too much sun exposure and it's going well with my shirt. So that's nice. This is really nice. I believe these are $65 here in Canada. So for the price point, for something similar, I don't know if I would buy this. I'm gonna have to use it and try it out more, but it reminds me of the Chanel and the Chanel is a little bit cheaper than this. So I would go with Chanel over Gucci. Now for the actual blush portion, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Fit Me Blush in number 15, Light Nude. This shade has a little bit more of a dusky, purpley, rosy mauve shade. And I felt like this would do really well for tying all the shades of the highlight and that blush that we use as a bronzer together. I don't know, something's throwing me off with a look though. I'm gonna add a little bit of brow because I can still see sunscreen <laughs> coming through my brows. So this is the Huda Beauty Bomb Brows. So it's kind of like my all over the place how I've been feeling lately with beauty and purchasing stuff. It's made me reconsider how I want to do things here on my channel. I'm doing this declutter now, and this is kind of for me like the turning point of how my channel is going to function. I'm going through no longer keeping that mindset that I need this for my channel. This is something I need to do or keep for review for demonstration products. If I don't like it, it's going. And then the products that I'm keeping, there is going to be this switch to even if something's old, maybe something isn't new, maybe it was launched a few years ago, it's going to get reviewed and I'm gonna give you my take on something. So there's older products, there's products that I look for reviews online that I wouldn't purchase and I can't find a review or I can't find a shade of a certain product. Hopefully those reviews will be helpful to someone who's in a similar boat as me. I'm no longer gonna really be checking out new releases all the time from brands I just don't feel excited by. I don't know if I finished that thought earlier, but some of the brands I just kind of feel really kind of bored of and uninspired by lately were Charlotte Tilbury, Pat McGrath, and Natasha Nono. All beautiful, really lovely makeup artist, luxury brands, but I've purchased stuff from all the brands and their brands, their products are nice. I understand their appeal, but for me as a consumer, what I like, they're just not really my cup of tea. I've got products I'm hanging off from all three. The only thing I'm keeping from Natasha Nona is the midi size of the retro palette, Pat McGrath. I've got blushes, a lip pencil, and oh, my Divine Rose 1. I did pass on the Divine Rose 2 to a friend. Let's put on a lip to tie everything together. I'm going to blot off the Dior lip oil and I'm gonna use my Jaclyn Cosmetics lip pencil in Macaron. This lip pencil is just so good. This is like the warmer sister of my beloved MAC lip pencil in the shade Dervish. Macaron is very similar to Dervish. It has that little bit of that sheen or iridescence to the formula, but it's warmer, where Dervish is a little bit more cooler. And the Jaclyn Hill lip liner, what is this called? I guess it's just called lip liner. But this formula is much creamier than the MAC lip pencil in Dervish. Dervish compared to the other MAC lip pencils is a little bit drier. I feel like it has to do with that light reflecting pigment it has in it. To top off this, I'm gonna use my Bobbi Brown Luxe Matte Lip Color in the shade Boss Pink. Bobbi Brown is another brand that I keep seeing pop up a lot more on YouTube. That excites me. Bobbi Brown, Laura Mercier, Lancome, Estee Lauder, they are brands that are kind of like pillars in the makeup industry. And those are brands I would like to focus on a little bit more because they have great products that definitely have stood the test of time. And also recently, I've been doing this thing that I'm doing today where I'm layering a lot of different lip products and blotting in between. I have a lot of lip products and if I don't layer it, then they're not gonna get used. This is a Sephora Collection Lip Stories lipstick in number seven, Love Love. I will be completely honest. I bought this because of the shade, the shade Love Love. And it's not the most flattering on me, at least. This is almost like a slightly neutral leaning curl, kind of matte 
nude shade, but blended with other colors, it's really beautiful. So the shade Love Love appealed to me because anytime I talk to my mom on the phone, at the end of the phone call, we'll be like, love you. Okay, love you too. Love, love. Love, love was just always kind of like what we say to each other since I got my first cell phone when I was 16. So for over half my life now, that's been something that stuck with us. So when I saw the shade name, I'm like, I need that. Kind of like how most of the fragrances I buy all trigger some type of memory or something for me. Okay, there is a little bit more of the Bobbi Brown Boss Pink Luxe Matte on top of Love Love. And I'm gonna finish off with a Rimmel State Glossy in, I don't know, it's like a mauvey peach with sparkle. I'm going to set my face. A little bit of my CoverGirl Clump Crusher Mascara. I'm definitely feeling a little too shiny, so I'm gonna take a little bit more of my Ramon Better Than Finish Powder, and I'm just gonna mattify my T-zone. Actually, I think I'm gonna take a little bit right on top of that highlight. Oh, so much better. That is a level of shine that I like. Okay, now I feel like I need to touch more setting spray. So I'm just gonna go, okay, there we go. So powdered over everything, add a little bit of setting spray just to the high points of the cheeks. That way the highlight still has some glow since I did tone it down a little too much. But here is just kind of the vibe. This is like my soft summer, end of the summer, kind of recreating those summer into fall transitional colors using more of like this monochromatic color story, which I really like. I didn't realize everything was gonna be so cohesive within the color family, but I really enjoy it. We got to play with some new products like the Gucci blush and somewhat newer Charlotte Tilbury highlight. Definitely like the Gucci blush way more than the Charlotte Tilbury highlight. This is nice, just not as cool toned as I was expecting it. Gucci blush is really nice, but I still feel like the Chanel Juice Contrast blush in the shade Rose Bronze is very similar, more affordable. And then I finally tested out the Revlon Color Say Skin Awakening in 002. Really nice shade. I would like to try it again with a different kind of priming base situation. So hopefully it doesn't kind of roll up like it did today. I feel like that was definitely something to do with the prep work, not the product itself. But here's that. Uh, this was a fairly rambly video, so if you're still here, thank you so much for just relaxing and listening and let me know your thoughts on everything that I've mentioned today. Have you felt a similar way? How do you feel about channels focusing more on products they genuinely enjoy instead of rushing out to buy the newest this or the newest that? If you found it enjoyable, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I will see you all on the next video. Bye y'all.